Hey guys, what's up? It's Mike. I'm um, here with it's Wednesday New Comic Book Day, so I'm doing a couple of reviews for like, Crash of the Night, I guess. It's really um. So I'm actually gonna be reviewing something that came out last week that I didn't get until this week. Um, and it's cold in my house, so I'm using a pink blanket. It's very warm, actually, not a blanket. So it's very warm now, but hence the blanket draped over my shoulders. Um, so I'm gonna be reviewing um. FF number 12, and um, by Jonathan Hickman, Juan Bobillo, Bobillo, um, who are the, the main, the artists of their team. I actually just found out that there was a variant cover for the 50th anniversary of um, for a Fantastic Four, a cover by Scotty Young, but weirdly enough, both comic book stores I went to this week did not have a copy of it. Maybe they did, and I'm just an idiot. They didn't have it on the shelf, which sort of irritated me. But um, I'm probably gonna go maybe pick up a copy of it, um, a copy of the variant. The variant's really nice. So yeah, um, FF number 12. I was really looking forward to this issue. Um, this takes that place directly after um, after Fantastic Four 600, and it focuses on the kids. And I've been looking forward to a kid-centric. Um, issue of Fantastic, not Fantastic Four, but Future Foundation, we really haven't had one of those yet. It's been mostly about the adults, and I felt this this was a chance for Jonathan Hickman to, to have a zany, wacky adventure with the kids, you know, put, so um, let's just backstory real quick. So as we know, um, as you guys might have known, um, the, this, place takes, this takes place directly after Fantastic Four 600, and the, the kids have teleported. <laughs> Um, the top three floors of the Baxter building, out of danger, they were being attacked by the Annihilus and his his minions. And when they, when we, when we meet up with them, I guess they're in a snowy mountain place, and they they're telling how they're saying how they had to go back, that they were supposed to like they they could only teleport the top three floors, and that meant they they left behind a negative zone portal, and if it gets open, everyone's gonna need help their help. So they decide to, to find a way to get back, and the only way would be to go talk to Dr. Doom. And, and Valeria tells them that she has teleported them to um, Latveria, Uncle Doom's place. Um, we also see that there's a... We also see Nathaniel Richards, Reed's father, alternate Reed, um, and Dr. Doom, and Dr. Doom's son, Kristoff. And we are just like... Um, they're, they're they're still trying. We're still trying to figure out Reed's plan. It's mostly just them talking. Um, when Valeria gets there, uh, they all meet up, and um, we see a flashback about how Valeria and Nathaniel had a had a secret plan about how to save the world because Nathaniel saw the future and he's like the only ways for him, Valeria to to do something. And I assume this means helping alter alternate Reed. So basically, the issue ends with them helping alternate Reed, and then Doctor Doom essentially providing the transportation for them to head back to the city. Now, um, um, the the issue let me down. I guess I just felt like there could have been so much more with this issue than just background story. This could have been like a zany adventure for the kids. Um, I mean, it's, Hickman knows how to write, and the writing's good, and it, it draws you in. Um, so you want to know everything, but the art really doesn't pick up where that is, and um, I'll talk about the art in a second. But the, I wish, wish Hickman had, like, took the initiative and did a, a zany adventure, like, send the kids into, like, like, I don't mind that they're in live area, but, like, have them fight, like, snow monsters, or, like, abominable, like, have them fight, like, monsters, and this was a chance for them to, to be heroes, to have fun, and be in a dangerous situation. Um, because not, like, the kids have experience. Um, for example, um, you know, Alex Powers is there. Um, he's, he was part of the power pack with his three siblings. Um, I, I think he can just gravity, that's his power. Um, Franklin Richards is there, he, he's, he's, like, I guess, like, the equivalent of God in the Marvel Universe, he can do whatever the hell he wants. Um, we have Dragon Man, there's a couple Moloids, Valeria Richards, one of the smartest people in the world. Um, 
Bentley, who's essentially, I believe, a clone of one of the Fantastic Four villains. I forget who. If you guys do know, put it, type in the comment box. I'm, I'm blanking on him. Um, they're, as I said, Moloid. There's some old school Atlanteans who's wearing uh, like water bubbles on their head. So it's like this could have been like a crazy fun time. And I wish Hickman um, did something with that. You know, did something with this. I mean, probably in Fantastic and FF 13 is gonna be a lot better. But right now, it could have been like this could have been a great setting up issue for like uh, a zany like two part like adventure before they went back to New York and it doesn't seem like it's going to be like that so that's story wise I mean it's okay um the, the thing that that really bums me out about this issue is the art by Juan Bobillo Bobillo I don't want to pronounce it his art is very interesting but this like it's interesting but I didn't expect it and actually really don't like it I've never actually seen his art before but um at this point um all it was hard differentiating between some of the characters for example Bentley and Alex Powers they look very similar um he drew the hair weird he drew just he drew the characters weird um both the adults and the kids and no the way the only way I can describe him is if you guys have seen uh, Batman the anime series, the when they're t when Clayface um, was dying and melting, uh, there's um, a point where there's a point where he's he's melting and um, that's what they look like. Like they look like Clayface when he was dying, like he was melting, like their face was like made of clay. It was gross. They looked a little weird, awkward. Like the kids look like adults, and the adults just look like awkward. Um, I wish that the art was a little bit better, and that's what really dragged the issue down for me personally. Some of you guys might like the art. I really don't. I I didn't expect it. Maybe this is his first time. I I don't really know this Leo or his artwork, but it was just not working for me on this book. So that's about it. Um, I'm gonna be giving this issue a two out of five, mostly because of the just it just was disappointing having this issue show up right after Fantastic Four 600, which was really good, I and mean, parts of it were really good. So um, yeah, two out of five. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. If you have different thoughts about the book, let me know. If you like the book a lot more than I did, you know, tell me that. Um, I don't really have much else to say. Um, you know, let me know what you're reading. Leave your opinion, subscribe, whatever you like. Watch, check out my other videos. I'm be posting up a lot more stuff, like four or five more videos tonight, and a couple more tomorrow. So thanks, guys.